Amen. Grab a pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated as we adventure in the word of his grace. <clears throat> Glory to God. Okay. <clears throat> this morning we started a series that is going to run the whole week, maybe into even next week, on being filled with the spirit. Being filled with the spirit. I laid a doctrine of foundation this morning in the first service on the ministry of the laying on of hands. I'm going to talk a little bit about that also in this service, but I would like us to get into the subject matter, which is how to get people filled with the spirit, how to get people filled with the Holy Ghost, how to get people filled with the Holy Ghost, how to get people filled with the Holy Ghost. A basic, a basic or a fundamental, you know, understanding you must have is that people are born again and they are born of the spirit. When people get born again, they are born of the spirit of God. And the spirit of God indwells all believers. The spirit of God indwells or dwells in every believer. The spirit of God does not visit believers. The spirit of God dwells in believers. Except you are not a believer in Jesus or you are not born again. But the day you got born again was the day you received the Holy Spirit. Born again means to receive the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You don't receive the Holy Spirit after you are born again. Uh -uh. It's the Holy Spirit that born you again. Okay, so being born again means to be born of the Spirit. And when you are born of the Spirit, it means the Spirit indwells you. Alright, look at Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Brother Paul communicating these truths to the church at Rome. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, who is on the computer, you better walk with me. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Next verse. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh verse 4 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit verse 5 for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit next verse for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace verse 7 because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Next verse. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ... He is none of his. You cannot be a believer if you don't have the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that gave birth to you as a child of God. Look at the next verse, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. By his spirit that dwelleth in you. Verse 12. Therefore brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. 13. 13. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So that already shows you that there's an indwelling of the spirit. The indwelling of the spirit is called the new birth. The new birth to be born again. Look at verse 15 of that Romans chapter 8 verse 15 and 16. <clears throat> For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father. 16. For the spirit itself also beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. There is a witness of the spirit in us. The spirit is in us bearing witness that we are born of God. That is the spirit in us is the witness of our salvation. 
The spirit of God living in us is the witness that we're born again. You know, uh, uh, brother Paul talking to the church at Ephesus said, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. You are sealed. So the seal, the proof, the evidence that you are born of God is the Holy Spirit living inside you. All right? You're born of the spirit. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. See the way brother Paul communicates that thought to the church at Corinth. He says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. The spirit of God dwelleth. It's called the indwelling of the spirit. Look at verse 19 of that same 1 Corinthians. Verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 3 verse 19 <clears throat> for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with god no 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 that's not what i'm looking for first corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 first give me 3 16 first corinthians know ye not that you are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwelleth in you look at the next verse 17 if any man defile the temple of god him shall god destroy for the temple of god is holy which temple you are verse 18 let no man deceive himself. If any among you, give me verse 20 of the same chapter. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. All right, now, observe carefully that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit or the temple of God. Look at the way Jesus will communicate the same thing to them in the book of John 14, 16. John chapter 14, verse number 16. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Next verse. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So the spirit of God dwells in you at the new birth. Look at the prophecy of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36, 26. Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Next verse. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So in the new birth, we are born of the spirit or the spirit indwells us. John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus speaking to Nicodemus at night. John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5. 3, 5. John 3, 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, that is of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Next verse. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. Verse, verse 8. Verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listed. And thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. So at new birth, a believer is born of the spirit. He has the indwelling of the spirit. Say with me everybody, I am born of the spirit of God. Can I hear you say it one more time? Now after you are born again, there is an experience called being filled with the spirit. After you are born of the spirit, you have the indwelling of the spirit. There is an experience called being filled with the spirit, which is not being born again. Being born again is being born of the spirit or the indwelling of the spirit. After that, there is another experience called being filled with the spirit. You must have that clarity in your mind that there's a difference between being born of the spirit, the indwelling of the spirit, and being filled with the spirit. And Jesus gave that distinction to the apostles who were his disciples. He spoke about the spirit indwelling them. He told them in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Look at Acts chapter 1 verse number 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Look at Luke 49. I mean, look, yeah, Luke 24, 49. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But ye, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. The spirit upon or the endowment of, of the spirit on the believer. So there's something we call the Holy Ghost upon in the book of Acts. Holy Ghost upon in the book of Acts. Which is also called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost upon or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Which refers to utterance, utterances. Utterance is what we call the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Or being filled with the Spirit. is called utterance, utterance. Look at Mark chapter 16 verse 16. Mark 16, 16 and 17. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Next verse. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They that believe shall speak with new tongues. Some people that have been through some of the churches, denominational churches, we are told that you don't have to speak in tongues. That speaking in tongues is a gift for some people. That is not true. There is the gift of speaking in tongues. And there is speaking in tongues for every believer. This sign shall follow. Are you a believer? Wave your hand and say, I am a believer. I talk in tongues. It is one of my signs. This sign shall follow. Is that Kelechi? Are you serious? This sign shall follow those that believe. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. Glossololia. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall... Every believer ought to speak with new tongues. Except you are not a believer. New birth, new spirit, new tongues. You are a new man, new birth, new country, new identity, new language. Am I teaching here? You are born anew. You are in a citizen of a new country. You have a new identity. You are a new creation. You speak with new tongues. It's new, 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 new. So for somebody to tell you you, 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 you don't have to speak in tongues, it's like somebody saying that the federal government has given an allocation for every power citizen to collect one million naira for free. Then you, you say, you tell another brother, you really don't have to collect it. Even though there is one million in the church office for you from federal government you really don't have to collect it because it's not necessary so when they tell you you don't have to speak in tongues what they are telling is that you don't have to receive a gift of god freely given to you that makes you effective as a new creation are you understanding yeah that's what they are saying he said this sign shall follow except you're not a believer this sign shall follow those that believe in my name, they shall ninga nongo luna mahata. Merika toninga kaladabolo kodobo hotea. I don't owe you an apology for magening yini manahata. And I don't have to look nice for mondo lubuto kalata balete. It is a sign that follows me because I am a believer in the resurrection of Jesus. And it was after he rose from the dead that he gave them that. So tongues is the language of immortality. Tongue is the language that he gave us upon his resurrection. The Bible says, which he has shed forth. Hallelujah. This sign shall follow. Oh, signs follow me. I talk in tongues. So there is an experience of being filled with the spirit. It happened on the day of Pentecost. That was the first time it happened. Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. Acts of the apostles chapter 2. And it's important for you to understand. Because you too will teach this somebody what I'm teaching you. To help him to speak in tongues. Okay, so it's important that you're making notes and understand it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Next verse. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Observe, observe. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Fire didn't come on them. 
That is, they spoke in tongues figuratively like as of fire. It wasn't fire, it was just a figure of speech. Look at the next verse, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost began to speak with other tongues. Is that what is in your Bible? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Also in Acts chapter 8, when Philip had preached in Samaria, Acts 8, 13, when the apostles heard that Samaria had received the gospel, Acts chapter 8, verse 13, all right, give me from verse 12. <clears throat> but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus, they were baptized. This is not water. This is Holy Ghost. They were born again. They were baptized, both men and women. Look at the next verse. Then Simon himself believed also. Simon was a native doctor. Simon was a sorcerer. Simon was, was a juju priest. So when Simon, who was a juju priest, when he himself heard what has happened, he believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Samaria received the gospel. All right, now, in verse 17 of that, of that same Acts chapter 8, verse 17. <clears throat> Acts 8, 17. Then laid them their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Give me from 16, pretext. Acts 8, 16. For as yet he was falling upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and when hands were laid on them, they received the Holy Ghost. So something happened to brother Paul when he got born again. What happened to Paul? Acts 9, 17. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, had sent me that thou mayest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. When he said that, they may receive the Holy Ghost there, he was referring to utterance. Look at verse 21 of that same Acts chapter chapter 9 <clears throat> but all they that heard him were amazed and said is not this he that destroyed them which call on on this name in jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest when they heard paul speaking in tongues and declaring the mighty works of god and teaching the gospel they say is this not the man that destroyed this same christianity it's not the man that did damage to this gospel a lot of people persecuting us who will preach this gospel with us. And they are coming. They are coming. I say 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 they are coming. And Acts chapter 8 verse 21. Look at this Simon the sorcerer. Acts 8 21. Thou hast neither part. Now go back to 19. Let me get some pretext. Give me verse 17. <clears throat> I want you to get the gist. Then let the their hands on them and they received the holy ghost next verse and when simon saw that through laying on of the apostles hands the holy ghost was given he offered them money saying give me also this power that on whomsoever i lay hands he may receive the holy ghost now this is a native doctor who was doing miracles he was doing miracles. He was doing miracles. When he saw the way the apostles did it, they, they were not doing miracles here. They were laying hands and people spoke in tongues. He knew that he couldn't do that. That's another dimension. And I'm sure he was, he was imagining how his customers will follow them. So he now followed them and said, this thing you're doing, Take money, transfer it to me. Are you understanding? Because native doctors is all about collecting money. 
collect money, relocate the problem from your leg to the hand. You come and pay for the hand, they move it to the neck because Satan is a thief. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Okay. So he now brought money. Now when they said you have no matter, you have no part in this matter. The word matter there is the word utterance. You have no part in this utterance. Utterance. You have no part in this matter which is utterance. So in Acts chapter 9, when Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost, how did we know he spoke with tongues? Read what brother Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14.18. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. So when Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost, he spoke in tongues. And he said, I speak in tongues more than all of you put together. Look at Acts 19, 6. <clears throat> Acts 19, 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. I can go on and on and show you that everywhere people got born again, the apostles got them baptized with the Holy Ghost and they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. Every believer who speaks in tongues ought to prophesy. Ought to. Ought to. Once you start speaking in tongues, you should prophesy. So we have two instances where people were born again, hands were laid on them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Did we observe that? Hands were laid and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 is different. Acts chapter 8. Brother Paul, Acts 19 6. So we've seen four different cases of people receiving the Holy Ghost. And out of the four of them, one, one, there was nobody laying hands. The other three, hands were laid. Which one did nobody lay hands? Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost. Very good, very good. Now, in Acts chapter 19, verse 6, Paul laid hands on them. They received the Holy Ghost. Okay? So we have four instances where people got saved and required to be ministered to that they might be filled with the Spirit. So three out of four instances, hands were laid. Only one had no hand laid. Acts 8, 9, and 19, hands were laid. On the day of Pentecost, nobody laid hands. It was spontaneous. We have a fifth one, Acts chapter 10 in the house of Cornelius. Acts chapter 10. And if you observe, in all of the five instances, men ministered the Holy Ghost. In all of the five, men ministered. Acts chapter 2, it was men that ministered. Okay? Jesus. Jesus is a man. He baptized them with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 8, men ministered. Acts chapter 9, Paul, Ananias. Acts chapter 19, Paul at Ephesus. Acts chapter 10 in the house of Cornelius, Peter. Men, 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 ministered to men. Men ministered to men. Now, three instances, hands were laid. Two instances, no hands were laid. On the day of Pentecost, no hands were laid. In the house of Cornelius, while Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell on them. And they spoke with tongues. Are you observing? Three hands were laid. Two, nobody laid hands. But they got baptized with the Holy Ghost. So that means people can get baptized with the Holy Ghost either by laying of hands or without laying of hands. Is it clear? If we're together on the same page, can I hear a power CD? Amen. Amen. Okay. So, now, there's a uniqueness to Acts 10 and 2. Acts 10 was the first time the Gentiles received the Holy Ghost. The first time Gentiles, Acts 10. So it's exceptional. And if you observe, after that, Acts 10 and Acts 2, the rest hands were laid. Okay, so Acts 2, Jewish people on the day of Pentecost. Acts 10, Gentiles. So both the first time Gentiles received, no hands were laid. Jews received, no hands were laid. But in between, hands were laid. Is it clear? So it appears that the most effective way to get people baptized with the Holy Ghost is by laying hands. You lay hands on them. And then 
you know, they begin to speak. I'm going to give you a few steps that will help you. Just a few things to observe when getting people baptized with the Holy Ghost. Are you still in the building? Now, please pay attention. For example, the way Peter and John went to Samaria, it seemed to be that when they preached in Acts chapter 2, 4, and 5, that was the way they ministered because they laid hands. See Ananias. Ananias laid hands on Paul. And Paul received the Holy Ghost. That means it is a first line of ministry. First line of ministry to have people filled with the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands. First line. Bring people, lay hands on them, get them to speak in tongues. Bring people, lay hands on them, get them to speak in tongues. <clears throat> Look at Acts chapter 8 verse 17. Again. Acts 8 17. They, they laid they, their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. This was almost like a whole city. So that means it was not a one day. It was a continuous meeting where they were laying hands on people per day, per day, per day until everybody that came to the meetings received the Holy Ghost. Are you still in the building here? It's like a follow-up kind of service. After people are born again, then we start follow-up teachings where we get them baptized with the Holy Ghost and explain to them what has just happened to them. All right, so it's likely that they also explain that that means we can have dedicated meetings. A pastor can arrange dedicated meetings where he keeps laying hands on people and minister to them the things of the spirit. Dedicated meetings where we lay hands and just minister to you. And it's a major thing. It's a very major thing. It cannot be ignored. And as you grow in knowledge, we'll have a lot of these meetings. Lay hands on you and just impart, stir you up, release you to just explode and just have an exciting time, you know, being a blessing to other people. Somebody in the first service says, so if we cannot, if we're not in New York, can't hands be laid on us? How can we lay hands on if you're not in New York? If you're not in New York, it's a shortage for you. It's a shortage. There is no, no other way to do it. There are realms of the operation of the spirit you can never enter until hands are laid on you. Period. That's why you have to travel some time buy a ticket, pay hotel and come physically to the place and bring your head, let hands be put on it. And by the time you buy ticket and fly, when the hands are coming on your head and you remember the ticket you have bought, you will collect everything. <laughs> but there are times you travel. I have traveled to places to get hands laid on my head. A number of times I've gone to the Americas to, 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 to meet fathers in the faith, people like Kenneth Copeland. To have them lay hands on me. I even have photographs of where they, they laid hands on me and ministered to me. There are times I have to travel, buy my ticket. I just go take some time, pray, and meet the men of God that I listen to and honor to lay hands and do an impartation on me. I buy my ticket and go. I have listened to all their teachings. I have read all their books. It's not enough. I still go. Renhard Bonke said his ministry became what it was all over the world. How many of you know Renhard Bonke? Anybody who doesn't know Renhard Bonke, maybe he was born yesterday. Renhard Bonke said his ministry went all over the world because as a student in London, he was in, in Bible school. Then one day he was going back for vacation in London and then he stopped by a place and he saw the Jeffrey brothers. It was like a signboard in front of a house. The Jeffrey brothers. And in Bible school, he has read about the Jeffrey brothers. How that these guys will just enter hospital. They walk into a ward in the hospital. Two of them. One on this left, one on the right. And all of them will be walking around the hospital beds. And all they'll be saying to the sick people on the bed is, the master is here. The master is here. And if people are crippled, they will just stand up and walk. If people are, have a surgery has taken, just taking place, instantly the surgery is healed. The people will jump out. If legs are amputated, they, they grow out. The Jeffrey brothers. They walked in such supernatural operation of the miraculous. So Bonke said he was having a hunger to be able to operate that dimension. Then he saw signboard on a building, the Jeffrey brothers. So he stopped. He said, could this be the Jeffrey brothers I have been reading about in Bible school? So he came to the gate and touched the gate. And somebody came, came out. A young lady came and said, what are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for the Jeffrey brothers. I just saw the signboard. He said, you heard the old man's voice inside. Old Welsh voice. He said, let him come in. So they asked Bonke to come in. Bonke came in and saw the guy. And he said to him, I've been reading about the revivals. He said, yeah, sit down, young man. And he took him and shared with him everything that happened in their ministry. 
Bonke said, as the man was talking, it's like they took his hands and legs and plucked to electricity. As the man was talking, as the man was talking, it's like his whole body was on fire. Then the man stood up and said, I won't be around in a few days from now. I'll be leaving. I'll be leaving. But young man, I live with you what I carry. He laid down some bonke and transferred it. Bonke said from that meeting, he got back home. Then they now asked him to come and preach in a small church somewhere. And that when he was going to the church to preach, his Volkswagen car broke down. He managed to arrive at the church premises and he met an old woman in the building. And the old woman started complaining. You know, old women can gossip. You know, old women can gossip very well. The old woman started gossiping. He said, we hear that there's a man of God coming to preach in our church today. And she didn't know if Bonke was the man of God. He said, nobody expects to be blessed by him. She was telling the guest speaker that we hear that a guest speaker is coming and all of us are not expecting to be blessed by the guest speaker. So Bonke said his heart dropped. But he remembered the impartation. So the church gathered after a while. They gave him the microphone. He began to preach. He preached as if nothing was going to happen. In the midst of preaching, a crippled man started walking. That's how miracles broke out in his ministry. Impartation. There is, there, you can, that's why Paul said, I long to see you. There are realms of the supernatural you can never enter till you physically come to where the impartation takes place. Are, are we in the building here? Are we in the building here? People buy tickets to travel, to go and meet and encounter men of God that they are drinking from for an impartation. We are not saying you are not born again. We are not saying God cannot use you. No, what we are saying is there are some deposits. God must use a man to put it on you. Are we teaching here? Why will Jesus tell Paul, go? Go. Jesus didn't say, come, share you have met me. Take it. Go, you. Go. You will meet a man. He will tell you what to do. He came, and before he came, Jesus told Ananias, Paul is coming. Pray for him to receive his sight and to receive the Holy Ghost. He told Jesus, that man kills people. Jesus told him, don't worry. He's, he's, now, he's now one of us. Are you following and when he arrived, the man laid hands on him. His eyes opened. He received the Holy Ghost. There are, there are men that God must use in your life. And one of those men is standing before you today. There are men that God must put, put in your life who imparts into you. See, I long to see you. In Romans 1.11. Put it up for me. Romans 1.11. Romans 1.11. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. To the end that you may be established. Are we in the building? Are we in the building? It's a major thing that cannot be ignored. It appears like Simon the sorcerer was just watching instead of participating. Look at that Acts chapter 8 verse 9. Just pay attention. Acts chapter 8 verse number 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Next verse. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying this man is the great power of God. He held a whole city spellbound. And to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believe Philip, the gospel is the answer. Philip enters a city where there's witches and wizards tying the city down. And when Philip entered, he didn't go to be ordering for sand. He didn't start doing oil on the streets. He entered and preached. And by the preaching of the world, the whole city was liberated. People believe the gospel. The cure to satanic oppression is the gospel. When you start speaking the gospel, the power of God is unleashed. And when the power of God is in operation, every counterfeit, every counterfeit gives way. Are we teaching good here? That's why somebody can come to this church with all kinds of darkness in his life and he sits down here and I start teaching and every darkness disappears. Suddenly light begins to shine because the gospel is the power of God. Are we teaching good? Yeah. Gospel is the power of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. 
Are you still in the building? When they believe Philip's preaching, okay, now if you observe, this sorcerer was always watching, beholding. That's why Peter's judgment was to stand. Go and perish with your money. Two things will perish. Him and the money. Go, you. Go, you and your money perish. Two things. He was a spectator. He didn't offer money to Philip. But he offered money to Peter. You know why he didn't offer money to Philip? Because what Philip was doing was miracles. He too was doing miracles. I don't know if you understand. Philip came doing miracles, which he himself was doing. So there was nothing there. But when he saw Peter, when they got these people born again, and the people started speaking in tongues, which he cannot. He now said, I don't have that one. I have these other ones, but that one, he brought a bag of money. Peter said, you and your money go and perish. We don't buy the gift of God. That's why any man of God who says you should bring money before he prays for you. You need to look at him again. We don't buy the gift of God. Freely you have received. Freely you give. You don't need to pay consultation fee. You don't, have, you don't need to sow a seed before I pray for you. No. Even if you're going to sow a seed, it will not be for the prayer. It will be for something else. You don't pay for the gift of God. How much do you have? If we were to buy the gift of God, nobody can afford it. That's why the gift of God is the grace of God. Grace is unconditional favor. Grace is unmerited. What you cannot afford. The grace of God. Hallelujah. Say with me, I'm born of the spirit. Say it again, I'm born of the spirit. Turn to your neighbor say, I talk in tongues. You know, some people don't like hearing that. Say it again, I talk in tongues. Say, hey neighbor, I talk in tongues. And when I talk in tongues, I speak to God and not to men. Amen. Are you excited? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Okay. So what did he want? What did he want? Tongues or laying on of hands? What did the sorcerer want? Tongues or laying on of hands? Laying on of hands because he saw that everybody they laid hands on. Boom. Man started speaking in tongues. It's like you, you know, sometimes when I minister Holy Ghost baptism to people, some people, the moment you just come by them, I just they just boom. It's like you, you unplug something or you open boom. As you just, some of them, the moment your hand is already coming because an impartation takes place. And sometimes their body can contain what you unleash. So they fall. They just fall. And some people, you, you will lay hands, lay leg, hug them, carry them. They are still looking at you. <laughs> You know what to do to such people? Sit them down. Open the Bible again and teach. Because for them to be even like that means they don't even know what is happening. So bring them home. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. I was getting one guy baptized. I've told this story over and over. After sharing with him and then I just told him to stand up and let me pray for him. He's, one, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. He has some cool money. So I just stood up to speak in tongues and I said, now go ahead. Receive the Holy Ghost. He just hey, said, Hey man, what rubbish am I speaking? I said, That's the rubbish you've been looking for. Go ahead, close your eyes, my friend, and speak the thing. <laughs> Glory to God. He speaketh not to man. It doesn't make sense. The more insensible, the more powerful. The more insensible it is, the more anointed. No man understanded it. Yet, in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. Who? Kabadayada. If you don't speak in tongues, you don't know what you're missing. He anonanada. latata. When you start speaking, you have this, this high. You feel high. When you start speaking in tongues, you feel 10 kilometers higher than you are. Somebody shout, I talk in tongues. Brother Paul said, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than all of you put together. No wonder he brought down revelations that nobody else could bring. 
when you begin to speak in tongues you start you start you start you start kabata 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 you 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 start interfacing with certain glory to god glory to god i say 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 glory to god Shatobalatana. Ziba. The man was willing to give all the money he has to get laying on of hands. Peter told him, no, no, go and perish with your money. Come buy the gift of God. Gift of God is too expensive. They laid hands on the people. And the people spoke in tongues. Did you observe that when they spoke in tongues, they interpreted. They spoke in tongues. And they interpreted the tongues. It's called prophecy. They spoke in tongues and interpreted it. Tongue and interpretation equals to prophecy. That's the formula. Tongues plus interpretation equals to prophecy. But not every prophecy is tongues and interpretation. There are prophecies that are direct. But there are also prophecies that will be tongued first and then interpreted. Interpreted with understanding or interpreted in English. So, so now, that means that there was no distinction on whom they were laying hands on. Because they laid hands on whomsoever was available. Whosoever wants will receive. You don't need a special qualification to speak in tongues. You just need to be born again. Once you're born again, you're qualified. Once you have received Christ, you're qualified. There is no qualification. The qualification is that you're being born again. He has made us partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has made us meet. Meet. Meet is not suya. He has made us meet means he has made us fit or qualified. He is our qualifier. So because he has qualified us, based on him qualifying us, we can now matobele tebatata. Jato, Kenima, Kanago, Kalida, Sister Mayama, Katumegede, Kalada Boja, Rakutana, Kalida Ba, Karoto Sike, Lebo Dogo, 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 Maga Dagaga, Sakali de Bobo Boshakaya, Rakoto Megea. Hallelujah. He told him, Go and perish with your money. You cannot buy the gift. That word gift is the Greek word doria or doron. Doron. Something that is offered freely. Offered freely. So until now, Peter used doria for utterance. Doria. Look at Acts 10 46. Acts 10 46. Acts 10 46. Mm -mm. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Look at Acts chapter 11, verse 15. Acts 11 15. And as I began to speak with the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them means all trans. The moment you hear upon anything upon upon is all trans. It means they began to speak. In Acts 2 38, Acts 2 38 on the day of Pentecost. See the way brother Peter said. Then Peter said unto, unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The doria of the Holy Ghost. Alright? Now, he told him you have no part or lot in this matter. The word part is a Greek word meris. It means to share. You have no share in this matter. It is used for something that is common for all of us. You have no share. You don't have to be qualified. All you need to be is a believer. Once you're a believer, you're qualified. You have no part. That means it belongs to those who believe. It is our collective property when we believe. You know, you have no part in it if you're not a believer. You have no part. And then when Peter said you have no part, he was saying that you are not born again. You are not born again. You native doctor. You are not born again. Then the second word is you have no lot. The word kleros in the Greek. You have no lot. Used for grace. Used for a portion. Used for an inheritance. Something you don't work for. What somebody gives to you. It means it is common to all of us. You have no part nor lot. That is whatever Peter is talking about is a foundation of fellowship. The new birth. You don't have, you're not born again. You can't partake of this. This inheritance is for those that are born again. Tongue talking is for every believer. Everyone that is born of God. That means the utterance is a function of being born again. 
Once you are born again, you are entitled to utterance. He wanted to lay hands. Now, did you observe that, that this guy wanted to receive because the guy saw that the people that received the laying of hands and spoke in tongues also laid hands on others to speak. That means the moment I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, at that moment I am qualified to baptize another person. So the moment I receive and I speak, I can turn also and lay hands on somebody and he will receive. Are we teaching good here? Yeah. The moment I receive, I can minister to somebody else. What I have received, I minister to somebody else. If I can speak in tongues, I can minister to somebody to speak in tongues. Is it getting clear? Yeah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Remember, Ananias. Ananias was just a brother. Yet he ministered to Paul who became an apostle. He ministered to Paul who became an apostle. Ananias was a disciple. That means he's learning. And he's paying attention to what he's learning. So that means if I am filled with the spirit, I can get other people filled with the spirit. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Say with me very loud. The ministry of getting people filled with the spirit is my inheritance. I have a lot and a part in this matter. I have. That man may not have, but me I have. <laughs> Praise God. You lay hands on people to receive because you yourself are filled. When you are filled, you can give to somebody. If you don't have, you can't give anybody. So once you are filled with the Spirit, you can fill other people. The moment you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are qualified to lay hands. Because it's an impartation of what you, you know. It's not like your own Holy Spirit will enter them. No, it's not like that. When you lay hands on them, you release them. To take off what is theirs. You release them to take it. When you lay hands. You step them up. Or like, like a pickup. You pick them up. Or you drag them. Or you become a towing van. You tow them. You tow them in. Are we teaching here? Yeah. You tow them in. Now, so what do I do to minister the Holy Ghost to people? Number one, I must give them enough information about the Holy Ghost. You must give them enough information. No sin consciousness and no insecurities. You must be able to explain to your audience what they are receiving. Like I said in the first service, the more you do spiritual things, the more you become effective. The more you win souls, the more effective you become in soul winning. The more you lay hands on the sick, the more effective you become in healing the sick. You see that? The more you speak in tongues, the more effective you become in communicating spiritual things. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. In Acts chapter 19, look at the discourse between Paul and those gentlemen. Acts 19 verse 1. And it came to pass where Paul, that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Next verse. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? You must know how to write the, how to ask the right questions. He didn't say, are you a believer? If he had said, are you a believer? They would have said, yes, that would be end of discussion. Because you can't preach to somebody who say, I'm a believer. So instead of saying, are you a believer? He went beyond believer. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They say, we have never heard that there is anything like Holy Ghost. That means you are not born again. <laughs> so there is no need again to ask, are you born again? Because from the way I came, you have admitted that you are not born again. So now he preached Christ to them. So you must know how to ask questions. You must know how to ask questions. As a minister, as an, ev you know, an evangelist who goes about to evangelize, you must know how to ask questions. 
Look at verse 3 of that Acts chapter 19. <clears throat> and he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? Because you've been talking about being baptized. And they said unto John's baptism. Verse 4. Then said Paul, John very really baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. They got born again. Verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and did what? At once. No delay. They received the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues. They prophesied. Because he said grace. Grace means you don't have to work for it. See, Because it's a grace, you can receive the Spirit, speak in tongues and prophesy. All of it is grace. You don't need special fasting. I was fasting specially. Then I prophesied. Uh -uh. Once you receive the Holy Ghost and you speak in tongues, you can prophesy. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You know the book of Acts is a summation account. Because actually what Peter did was he first of all gave them, he talked to them about Jesus, talked to, talked to them about John, about Jesus and about the baptism. Then he laid hands on them and they received. It was a detailed teaching. It was not a sharp, no, he took time to teach. He took time to explain. John, Jesus, Holy Ghost. So number one, information. Number two, information will carry instructions. Information will carry instructions. So in getting people filled with the spirit, you give them instructions. And then you lay hands. Let me give you a verse of scripture. Then we'll, we'll, I'll pray and lay hands on a few people in this service right now. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 again. Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were together in one accord in one place and suddenly, look at verse 4. <clears throat> and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost spake. Who spoke? They. So, who is supposed to speak when it comes to speaking in tongues? The man. The reason why people don't speak in tongues is because they are waiting for the Holy Ghost to talk. So, when they come to receive the burden of the Holy Ghost, they close their bar. They don't want to talk. It is your mouth the Holy Ghost is using. So you have to talk. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I receive. Hallelujah. I receive all trust. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. And when they begin to go that way, you that is ministry will say, Go ahead, go ahead. When you speak like because you give them confidence in what is beginning to come out as utterance. But if they go, ho, 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 and they look at you, or they wait for you, and you say, ho, 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 then they look at you. Because they are not sure. You are the teacher. If I'm doing it right, let me know so I can fly. And if I'm not doing it wrong, let me stop so that I don't do nonsense. So, that's why the teacher has to say, go ahead. That's it. That's it. Go ahead. Even if it is not it yet. That's it. <laughs> Glory to God. And they began to speak. Who spoke? And the spirit gave them utterance. Say, I have the spirit. I have utterance. It is left for me to speak. Some say, my own is not like your own. My own is just shiriba, 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 shiriba. Continue. 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 As you continue and gain confidence, you will flow more. Some say, no, but I'm not sure my own is the real Holy Ghost. There, once you are born, is your salvation fake? If your salvation is fake, your tongue is fake. But if your salvation is genuine, your tongues are genuine. Look at Luke chapter 11, verse 11. I want to pray. I want to pray. Luke 11, 11. <clears throat> Put it up. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, we live for a fish, give him a serpent. No father will do that. Next verse. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he give him a scorpion? This is Jesus talking. Next verse. 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You can't ask God for Holy Ghost and speak evil ghost. 
Just like your son cannot ask you for bread and you give him stone. If you say, Father, thank you for the spirit. I receive utterance. He and I, I labor. Oroto. It can't be fake. It can't be fake. Some say, but all of them are speaking the same thing. How do you know it's the same thing? Are you the coordinator? Or registrar? How do you know it's the same thing we are speaking? Are you the supervising officer? Your quality control manager? And even if it sounds the same, is it not the same Holy Ghost? Is it different Holy Ghost? Some of you tonight say, Shiri, Shiri, Shiri. Because you are afraid. Today, you will leave Shiri and enter Kotoba Lakataka. Takatakataka. Butagada. Dundrodus. Boboloto, Boloto. See, I speak in tongues. Say it confidently. Say it very well. Even if you don't, even if you have not started, because you will start now. See, I speak in tongues. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you in this. Glory! Say, I'm born of God. I'm born of the Spirit. I pray in the Spirit. Is there anybody here who wants to speak in tongues in this service? Anybody? Come quickly to the pulpit. Quickly. You want to speak? You have never spoken before? Come quickly to the pulpit right now. The rest of you just start speaking in tongues. You want to speak in tongues you've never spoken before? Lebron da gara takemba ranaza kale de boro kotos katala le goro tosike kakalina magadaga gaga joga lo de boro kotoseke le de baga le grada zaka la de brena katoline mangre de bozoko lo de boro kotoseke ya enge bozaka la na maga karata sekele ne bagaya le groto saka la de brena katali galenga bondo koto nigegea Hange bojaka, hange lene moko, kolo na magada, gadiga bono tobo, rokoto seke lideba. Hange bojaka. Look at me everybody, look at me everybody, all of you on the pulpit. You don't have to be afraid of anything. God has not given the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba Father. Say, I have the spirit of adoption. Say, I am born of God. Say, right now, the Holy Spirit lives inside me. Say, I have utterance. Right now. By the Spirit of God. Now say with me, I will speak in tongues. Right now. Say right now. I will speak in tongues. Because the Spirit of God lives on my inside. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Are you excited about it? It's not something you cry for. It's not something you beg for. Oh God, I beg. Oh God, I beg. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. That's not tongues. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. It's not tongues. You are begging. <laughs> tongues, you will hear it rise from your inside. You will hear it rise. And you will hear the syllables in your head. And then you start speaking. Are you, are you with me here? It, 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 it's not rocket science. It's inside you right now. And let me tell you, listen very carefully. When you minister, when you minister by laying of hands, because I'm going to call some of you to come and lay hands on them. When you minister by laying of hands, two gifts of the Spirit in, are in operation. The gift of faith and the gift of working of miracles. The gift, two gifts are in operation. When you minister to people, the moment you lay your hands, the gift of faith is the gift that makes them receive. Then the working of miracles is the tongue. Speaking in tongues is a working of miracles. Because it's not human language. It's the language of the spirit. Hallelujah. Lift your two hands up. Those of you that, pa pastor, pa pa the pastors, please come up. And those of you in the building who really feel, you just want to lay hands on them. You believe right now that, you know, you want to minister to somebody. Come, 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 come from all over the building. From everywhere, just come. Everybody to one. Everybody grab one person. Everybody to one person. Everybody to one person. All our district pastors and leaders, come, let's minister to them. Now, lift up your hands. Say with me very loud, all of you. Say with me very loud. Say with me very loud. In the name of Jesus, I am born of God. The Spirit of God lives on my inside. I receive utterance right now. 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 I receive utterance in the name of Jesus. Out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. I receive utterance. I receive utterance. Now begin to shout, thank you, Jesus, and just thank him as fast and loud as possible. 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 Go ahead and begin to thank him. Begin to speak that language. Begin to speak it. 
Speak, 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 speak. Leko shakaya karata kabaya. Hey, 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 hey. Mato sakaya da. Egere karana kabara katana. Helemo shakaya nakata karata kakara. Rakata karada sakaya nakata. Ega baba 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 shakaya namaha. Hey, hey, hey. Aya barakata sakaya da. Babreke de sakaya. Henge bo shaka, henge bo shaka. 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 Hey, hey, hey. Aga bo shaka yada, bo shaka yada. Go ahead, speak, speak, speak. Don't stop, speak, 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 speak. Speak it, speak it. Hereda gaga gaya. Henge bo shaka ya. Don't stop, go ahead. Henge ba, 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 Haga, 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 haga. Speak, speak, speak. Hey, Holy Ghost, haga borakata. Holy Ghost, shaka, shaka, shaka. Ah, shaka baya. Holy Ghost, shaka ba, 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 shaka ba. Ah, shaka baya. Go ahead, don't stop. Go ahead, go ahead, don't stop. Don't stop. Go ahead. Speak, speak, speak. Don't stop. Speak, speak, speak. Does it? Does it? Does it? Does it? Go ahead. Hekebo shakaya. 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 Hegeba sakaya Woo Bro shakakakala Hakaba baba baba Hakaba baba 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 Hakaba baba 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 Hakaba baba 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 Yes 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 All of our displays Rakombarana, 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 rakombarana. Woo! Woo! Hey! Ratobaya ta 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 ta. Power, power. The exceeding greatness of His power. To us who do believe, according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ. His mighty power. His mighty power. His mighty power. His mighty power. Which He wrought in Christ. When he raised him from the dead, Ango Shakaya, Ango Shakaya, Ango Shakaya, Ango. the building wherever you are go ahead and flow receive a fresh baptism receive a fresh baptism receive 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 a fresh baptism online on radio on television receive a fresh baptism ayana horada baba baba halabada 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 ayamana ayamana receive 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 healing if you are sick in your body receive healing receive miracles miracles receive miracles instant miracles receive healing mato shakayada oh 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 oh
the glory of God is in this place. The glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. The glory of the Lord is in this place. Receive healing. Receive miracles. Sick bodies be corrected. Oh, hola na mama mama le 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 bos. Brian le 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 bo 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 bo. Begin to sing in tongues. Begin to sing in tongues. Begin to sing in tongues. Go ahead and sing in tongues. Yande mbonda mbonda jagaba. Uda na le 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 bos. Ena le mo na jaga ya na maha. Randa ya na ma, mande lo do bos. Ele mano do de gari na mana ga da gile. Arande lo de bos satayana. Go ahead and sing in the spirit. 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 Ya le borokotonogos. Ya la 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 la. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hey, ya ba 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 ba. Hey, ya ba 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 ba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. you father glory to God hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus all over this place the spirit of God is moving yeah the glory of the Lord is in this place as the water covers the sea the glory of the Lord is in this place as the water covers the sea yes the flood of God's glory Thank you, Lord. Wave your hands and begin to praise Him. Wave your hands and begin to give Him worship and praise and bless the name of the Lord. Lift up holy hands and wave them to the Lord in worship. Wave those holy hands to the Lord in worship. Wave those holy hands to the Lord Jesus in worship. If you were sick before, check your body. Miracles are happening all over. If you are sick, check your body. Do what you couldn't do before. Check your body. Healing has already happened in your body. Miracles are all over this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Are you happy? Hallelujah. Amen. You can go back to your seats rejoicing. Go back to your seats, rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of them that can't stand, just leave them on the floor for a bit. Just leave them on the floor for a bit. Those of them that can't stand, just put them back and just allow them to take their time. Just allow them to take your, their time. Don't rush them. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody excited? Hallelujah. Wave those hands. Wave those hands. Wave those hands. Just wave to the Lord. Just wave those hands. Throughout this week, that's all I'm going to be teaching here. Be being filled with the Spirit. And every evening, this is not the week where you stay in house centers alone. This week, I encourage you to come physically here every day. Because I will teach and we will do spirituals. 
Every day we will just be flowing the whole of this week. I will teach, we will lay hands on you and just unleash you just the whole of this week till next Sunday is spirituals. Being filled with the spirit. It's going to be a very powerful week. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Huh. Just that we don't have time. I will have allowed you to start prophesying all over this place. Shakobadaya. Huh. Katobala. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Services like this are difficult to stop. Motakalada. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I feel joy in this place. Yeah! 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 Glory! <laughs> <laughs> glory, 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 glory. that looked impossible have become possible suddenly things are shifting suddenly there's a turn around impossibilities have become possible if your amen is louder receive it by grace take it moshata 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 Moshata, Moshata, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Somebody shout Holy Ghost! Hey! Oh, Holy Ghost! Lift your two hands and say Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Somebody shout Holy Ghost! Shout Holy Ghost!
your hands and wave them to him just wave your hands wave your hands wave your hands if you can speak in tongues speak in tongues wave your hands something is happening all over this place hey hey wave those hands wave those hands wave those hands wave those hands and receive Thank you. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your two hands. Let me pray for you, everybody. Lift your two hands. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, let me hear your amens like thunder. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Grace is upon your life. Grace is upon your life. I decree and I declare that the revelation of God's word grows big in your heart until nothing else matters. Barriers are terminated. Whatever was working against you has been subdued. 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 In the name of Jesus. I decree that sickness and disease be healed. Where you need a miracle, receive a miracle. Receive a miracle. Receive a miracle. Receive a miracle. In the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' precious name. Are you blessed? Just wave those hands to the Lord. Wave those hands to the Lord. You people, I make a lay hands on you. Let nobody come after these people. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's every day. So if I don't lay hands on you today, tomorrow, Tuesday, when is every day we're here? It's going to get very, very crazy this week. And it's going to get crazy for the rest of your life. The devil won't be able to explain you. You didn't hear what I just said. The devil will not be able to explain you. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Amen. 